My name is Andrew Reed. I do music and sound design as well as work in Max. And today we're taking a look at this. So this was my senior project in the Johnson University music tech program. It is a slightly modified Squire Mustang built over several weeks in my parents' garage. It's an electric guitar with a built-in custom MIDI controller, which consists of four toggle switches and a trackpad. Uh, that is pressure sensitive. And that is all controlled by an Arduino Micro. All right, this is gonna be a condensed video version of a live demo I gave a few weeks ago. So, I hope you like PowerPoint. So an XY MIDI pad installed on a guitar is not a new thing. And my inspiration came from things like this, as well as this article I found on a chaos pad made from an Arduino and a cheap laptop trackpad. So I made a list of things I wanted to improve upon. Uh, first, adding a third axis because I didn't want just X and Y, so that's where the pressure sensor idea came from. And then better access when playing was a big one because I didn't want something mounted back here behind the bridge. I wanted it where I can get to at the same time as the strings. I wanted multiple control groups toggleable from the guitar itself, and you'll see what I mean by that in a second. Uh, I wanted the guitar to output stereo, so this is actually a TRS jack, and the pickups are split between left and right. The Arduino uses a PS2 mouse library to interpret the trackpad data and the USB MIDI library to send MIDI over the USB port. So the starting point was this Squire Mustang I bought back in high school for a hundred bucks. And here are all the materials I ended up buying. And the wiring, which is fairly straightforward. So getting into the build process, it started with harvesting this trackpad out of an old HP laptop. And uh, with the help of YouTube and a little bit of trial and error, I was able to figure out which pads to solder to in order to read data off of it. So this is my initial wooden mock-up. I mainly made this to figure out where things needed to go and how much routing I would have to do on the actual guitar body, which I wanted to keep minimal. So my pit guard actually extends up quite a bit higher than the stock one to make room for those buttons. So the only large route I ended up having to do was this one for the buttons. Uh, that one at the top there was actually there when I bought the guitar from a switch the previous owner installed. Now I decided early on in the project that I wanted to make this out of a clear material. Uh, which was a pretty bold choice looking back. So I used what was available, which was Home Depot clear acrylic. Uh, and if you've never worked with acrylic before, it's very brittle. And I didn't know that going in, so I just kind of cut into a piece, started drilling, and of course, shattered, cracked all over the place. Uh, but after a little bit of online research, I was able to do it. So I ended up borrowing a router from my work to cut them out on, uh, and then cleaned it up with some files and a belt sander. And they came out pretty good. And then here is the actual guitar wiring harness being made, which is pretty straightforward. It just consists of two single coils, two volume pots, a switch, and a TRS jack. Now the choice to go with a Telecaster neck pickup was really just to make room for all of this wiring. So it saves a lot of space compared to the humbucker that was in here, and I think it looks pretty cool too. Now from that initial mock-up, I ended up changing the mounting solution for the trackpad quite a bit. I ended up tweaking the wiring to come out of the bottom of the trackpad and then mounted that on this piece of sheet metal I cut out, which is underneath the plexiglass guard. And it gives it a nice look, just kind of making this rectangular window around that main route. All right, now here is the MIDI controller coming together. So you can see the heart of it is the Arduino Micro, and up above it, we've got those four toggle switches. And you can think of these like stop box switches. They're just click on, click off. Uh, then there's me making a custom USB cable because I bought the wrong one. Now there is an inherent design flaw that some of you may have spotted already. Uh, and that's putting a tiny computer between your pickups isn't really great for interference. Uh, and I knew this, but I decided to go ahead with the design anyway, mainly for aesthetic reasons. And it was also done to minimize routing because these Mustangs already have a pretty large, just swimming pool route down the middle. So to try to cut down on this crosstalk a little bit, I put some braided metal shielding on the pickup wires, which did help, but it wasn't quite enough, particularly for the neck pickup. So I ended up making a piece of sheet metal shielding that goes around it. Here I'm just mocking up the shape with some cardstock, uh, cutting the same thing out of sheet metal, and then painting it. So to explain these channel groups, let's start by looking at just one of them. If you don't know Max, don't worry. Uh, all you need to know is that route object is showing the MIDI channels. 
So in this first group of four MIDI channels, we've got our switch, we've got the pressure sensor, and we've got its own scaled X and Y values. Now what I mean by that is when I turn on a second one, you can see they don't share the same values. They're individually scaled apart from the pressure sensor, which is the same across all. So here we've got our four MIDI groups. The audio interface I'm using is my Boss GX100, which is also running a noise gate and amp model on each channel. All other effects are running inside of Max. So here's a little effects chain I've put together in Max. Uh, signal flow in Max typically goes top to bottom. So you can see at the top there is my guitar coming in stereo. And at the bottom is the output, which is being recorded. And in between, we've got four effects. Now looking at the end of the chain, you can see that control group number four is live. So in this case, the only thing I have mapped is the Y value on the trackpad, which controls the dry wet on this upshot reverb. So let's set that somewhere around here and lock it in. Now one really cool option that stereo output gives you is digital pickup switching. So if I click on number one here, you can see it changes the volume of the neck and bridge pickup as I move on the x-axis. So if I move toward the neck pickup, you can hear it roll off the bridge and vice versa. And then up and down controls the phase. And of course to do this, the effect is also summing it to mono, so you lose that stereo spread, but no, it's just a trade-off. Next in the chain, I've got a ping pong delay, also from Upshot. I've got this one set up so that the pressure value snaps the feedback all the way on when it goes over a certain threshold. When it goes under that threshold, it snaps it to a set value, in this case 26%. Now what this gives you is a really cool sample and hold type effect. Next in the chain is a really cool plugin from Sennheiser. This is the Ambio Orbit plugin, which is a free surround sound mixing plugin. And for this one, I've got the X value controlling width and Y controlling the panning. So here's a little gem I did at the demo. Let's go ahead and crank up the wetness on the reverb just a little bit and turn on our ping pong delay. Now, since building this thing, I've had very little chance to actually play it. Uh, I think most of my time playing it has just been demonstrating it for other people. And people have given me so many ideas for the next iteration of this, uh, and I've got plenty of my own. But before I go back to the drawing board for version three, I really want to get some hours in playing this thing and see you know, what it's like from a performer's perspective. 
There's actually a piece written for this guitar already by the JU Laptop Ensemble. The video for that will hopefully be getting shot in the next few weeks. It uses neo riemannian theory and a delay system in Max, so if you like nerdy music stuff like that, be sure to stick around. 